sentiment. Republican Congressman from California, Devin Nunes. Uh, uh, Congressman, uh, uh, I think I've laid out the nature of what's happening with the infrastructure bill, uh, regardless even of the details. The fact is, once again, it's like a monster truck moving through. What is your experience on the Capitol right now? And why did 17 Republicans vote with the Democrats to make this happen? Well, I've never seen Washington this dysfunctional, and I've been here a while, and I've seen a lot of dysfunction. But Pelosi has managed to completely burn down this institution. And I know you covered the masks and CDC and all the games, but they've weaponized and destroyed everything here. So, uh, look, is this bill, we haven't, uh, the early indications of this bill is that it's not even paid for. So here's what the politicians keep doing here in Washington, is they don't want to make the tough decisions. So if you really want to fund infrastructure, that, that was the original intent of the gas tax that everyone pays at the pump. Right. So naturally, no one wants to go and increase gas prices at the pump. And what we're not doing, look, everybody knows that we need infrastructure. We constantly need infrastructure, but nobody's asking the tough questions. Why are states like California that have the highest taxes and the highest gas prices in the country, our roads are the very worst roads? And I've been in many other states, you know, traveling around the country, recruiting candidates and trying to get the message out about the problems that, that are in California, how we don't want to bring them to Washington. And the thing that I find, Tammy, is that it's really hard to figure out why are roads so much better in other states that have such lower gas prices? I mean, it's, it's really hard to believe. So, so this looks really gimmicky. I, you know, I know some of those senators, so I'm not sure I need to understand their thought process on this. But at this point in time, when they're claiming that this bill is paid for, we don't see it that way. Our budget committee has looked at it. Congressman. Uh, we think this is a lot of moving and shell games of money around. Well, that, but that's not unusual. I mean, Americans watch this. We keep watching it. Uh, the Obamacare bill, you've got to sign it before you know what's in it. Uh, you know, this is nothing new. And it, it, there's ge general cash, we would hope, and this is what the problem is, many argue with the uh, Republican Party, that it's more of the same, uh, that there's really no real, uh, even ideological division that this is about money for uh, the, the, the monster of government, that it's the uniparty. Right. So actions like this reinforce that, especially right. when they move through past this cloture dynamic, something that they don't even know what's in it, let alone how it's going to be paid for, considering the money now that is moving through. And then this other bill, the $3 trillion one that, that Sanders right. talks about. Do you, uh, do you, what do you think is going to happen with that? Is that going to well, be moved on through as well? Well, that's what I wanted to say next. So, so not only is this bill not paid for, but people need to understand that Pelosi has been over here saying, as have other progressives, that this bill goes nowhere unless they pass the three and a half trillion dollar bill, which is really the holy grail of what the left wants in this country, because then they get passed. They don't need cloture. They don't need the 60 right. votes. Right. So they're trying to get 50 the votes over there in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they want the 50 votes, have the vice president come over and break the tie, send it over here and push it through. Right. And they can spend the next year trying to do tremendous damage to this country. So I just hope that my Republican colleagues in the Senate aren't creating a vehicle, a political vehicle, mm -hmm. so to speak, that allows this to be, the skits to be greased, because that's what Pelosi and the progressives are saying. And look, uh, most of the time mm. when they make these threats, uh, they, they go even farther left than what they're indicating they're going to go. You know, I, I, uh, I don't think you were told, uh, uh, warned about this question, but I want to see if you have anything to say about some of the reports that there's a request, by, I think, by the Freedom Caucus uh, to remove Kinzinger and, uh, and, and Cheney. Uh, from the caucus. It, what do you think of that, considering their participation in the January 6th committee, and that, uh, well, of course, a lot of people are up in arms uh, about their well, attitude? Look, I, I've had a lot of experience uh, with the scam on that committee and what Pelosi put together and the people that she put on, on that committee. Uh, the, the, the challenge is, and, this is and, I've and I've talked to my friends in the Freedom Caucus, is that Pelosi has taken the unprecedented step of putting people wherever she wants. This is the first time in history where you have the majority party, the speaker, deciding who gets put on to parties. So they the, could the say fact no. of the matter like, is, Cheney and Kinziger could, could have said no, and they didn't. Well, they so should, is the they, GOP they going to do no. anything about them? Well, well they, said, they should have said no, but here's the issue. If, we, if, if us kicking them off the committee makes no difference because she just puts them back on. I mean, so that's the, that's, that's the issue here. And look, and she could go even farther than that. We're, we're in uncharted territory yeah. of a speaker deciding 
where the Republicans sit on committees. And yes, so and, it, it's just a, I, a I political agree. problem. All of it's awful, and yet there is a question about what is the GOP ever going to do about it. I have a lot of respect for you. I really appreciate you coming yeah. on, but those well, questions voters, will continue. Tammy, at the end of the day, the voters in those states will, will have to speak, and that's in, yeah. you know, that's coming quickly. We're, we're not at the end of the day. We're right here, and something else can happen to them in the meantime. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.